Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We're live. We're here. Banging Bears Podcast 118, I believe. Yeah, that sounds right. 118. <laughs> we're going to go with that. Uh, we're going to drink some beers from Tommy Knockers. Not the local band, Tommy Knockers. There's a local band. There, yeah, Knockers. yeah. Al, Al Mushron. Tori was part of it. Tori yeah. was helping out with the Tommy Knockers. I think she's still a member. I don't know. Um, I don't I don't know the, the whole thing with Tommy Knockers. But Tommy Knockers is actually a cryptid as well. It's like a Americanized version of a leprechaun, I think. I was going to do the history it's of it. It's a very... It's a, I never read the book, but the movie sucked. Yeah, the movie's not great. Um, One of those but, Stephen King hit or misses. But it is technically a cryptid, so I was like, oh man, that's a cold beer. Um, didn't know that we actually get some of this beer in our area, which is yeah. crazy to think about, because when you walk into their tap room, it's literally like a normal size tap room, and all their tanks are all there, and they only have one location in Colorado, and get distribution all the way to Pennsylvania, which oh. is kind of cool. Um, is that actually a Tommy knocker on the... Hands. Yes, that is the that is the Tommy knocker. He just looks like a, a leprechaun miner. I was just gonna say he looks like a cool yeah. Ma'am, turn you up a little bit here, Bob. Give me a check. One, two, one, two. There he is. We got you in the game now, Bob. All right. Um, before we get too far into it, I want to thank our sponsors. Um, first off, we want to thank Abaddon, Abaddon Tattoo Studio, a unique professional experience nestled in the small town of Pine Grove, Pennsylvania. They provide high quality tattoos and piercings in a relaxed, professional, and sterile environment. You can check out the links below and uh, book some appointments. If you guys are in the chat and you're talking to us and you're hanging out, maybe I'll. I, I have gift cards to give away. I just really don't know how to do it. And every time <laughs> I try to post a gift, a giveaway, I don't really get much reception. So I'm just gonna do it. Start doing it live. Like if people start commenting and chatting, like, oh, cool, we'll. Cool. We'll give you like a trivia question or something or just be like, thank you for supporting. Here's a gift card. But we have a lot of local gift cards. So if you're local, you can have a chance to win that while we do the show. If you're hanging out with us on a Sunday, tell us what you're drinking, what you're into. If you've had Tommy Knocker beers, um, probably going to talk a little bit about my vacation, some of the different breweries I went to, and we'll talk about what you guys have been doing off for two weeks. Um, the Patreon episode also just went live. Uh, Patreon episode number two. So it is on Facebook and the audio platforms. You can go listen to it after. So what we're going to do is this week will be our episode. Next week, Patreon live, Patreon live. And then we, we do a Patreon every time we record. So it'll always just be two episodes a week for you guys. So the week that we're off, now we're going to have content for you. Uh, if you want to join the Patreon, it is a dollar for a shout out, $5 for a shout out and um to see the episode early so if you want to see it right away because after we record it we post it so you can see it the same day um but that is available for you guys for the patreon but it, it does go after a little bit it will become public for everybody about a week or two after but we want to thank tommy b the tree of medical the tree of life metaphysical shop brad's alonis higher than other words podcast jay and awesome blackwell for their patreons um you guys are fantastic you keep us going and uh let's crack the first beer here start Get a pour, and then we'll we'll bullshit a little bit. Sound good? Cool. All right. So the first one we got here is the Tommy Knocker Tundra Tea Tea uh, Tundra Berry. Sorry, I almost said Tundra Tea Berry. <laughs> I added something that wasn't there. Um, I only had a little sip of this. Um, Austin had this in his flight, and uh, I was I was happy with it. It's weird to have normal sized cans, I guess. So, if you want to pull that up? Got it. Got to give it a read. Uh, Tundra Berry Ale from the Tommy Knocker Brewery. It's a fruit beer listed at 4.7 ABV. Uh, it has been checked in 4,557 times. I have six friend check-ins. Uh, I'm pretty sure I know who three of them are. <laughs> uh, this summer seasonal is a light ale brewed with all natural fruit, including raspberry, blueberry, grape, and cherry. The flavor profile is fruity, sweet, light, tart, and sour. Oh, this is I'm, I'm, I'm typing in tea berry now. Tundra, <laughs> tundra. Oh, they get run out of Heislers. <laughs> That's my favorite. Is a tea berry malt when I go out. Oh yeah, tea berry milkshake. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of a tea berry. Yeah, it, it honestly does. I think that's why I kept like calling it that, but it does remind me a lot of it. Um, yeah, this brewery was really cool. They have a lot, a lot of beers on tap. Uh, the cool thing about where this brewery is located is uh, the main street of their town. They literally block off all of the what, the traffic. You can only go down alleys, like, but the main streets are completely blocked off. And they built all these like pioneer coal miner tents looking things with That's like cool. the barrel tables and stuff like that. So it kind of fits the aesthetic and the theme. And this whole small town literally shut down their entire main street because there's a there's this place, there's a cider across the street, and then a few other breweries down the street as well. We missed the one brewery by like five minutes. They closed nah. at eight o'clock. 
but um the entire town shut down everything for all of their restaurants and breweries to kind of sit outside and enjoy enjoy the food that's cool the food here was really really good i don't remember what i ate but i just remember i really really enjoyed it i believe it was something with coleslaw and i don't like coleslaw but i still ate it on the sandwich because that's how it's served and i tried it and i really enjoyed it but the food was great uh really cool brewery everyone was super nice um got some merch there i believe i got a hat and stuff like that but uh overall great experience here uh first brewery that we went to in where is this you i don't even know where we are here is this colorado colorado yeah colorado uh, this is one of our day of day of one of two in Colorado, but uh, what do you think? I like it. It's not bad. Uh, it doesn't blow me away, and I I don't love fruit beers, but it's nice. Yeah, easy there, drinker. I will say that's going to be the overall theme. It, nothing's going to really blow you away except maybe one. I think it's going to be really really surprising, especially when I tell you how it's made. Um, but they're all solid. I think they're solid beers. Like nothing like over the top extravagant, but I think everything they try to hit, they nail it. Yeah, it's super solid fruit beer. Like, I get all the notes. I mean, the, the berry is a little pronounced, which I just don't love berry flavors. Mm -hmm. But it's a solid fruit beer. Yeah, I... I, I would drink 30,000 of these over one Yingling mango. <laughs> I had so many different mango-style beers, and that's the only thing we compared it to the whole time. We were there. <laughs> like, how would this be compared to the mango? Um, I Like I said, I, it doesn't blow me away, but I think of what it's trying to hit and being at all, uh, like it's not it's fruity but it's not like um so sweet you can't have a bunch of them like i can drink multiple cans of this i feel and this is something i can go back to and if i see it on the shelves i would buy a case of this yeah um that being said i, I kind of i'm looking at it and i'm like man maybe i went a little too high on my review but i'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to stick with it i'm going to stick with the 425 i really like our, 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 yeah 425 i really like this beer and i was trying very hard the uh the entire trip to protect the 4 um but this, the, a few, a few places just didn't, uh, didn't do that. Um, I, I went over the four mark, but I'm gonna go four two five on this. I went three five. I don't think it's anything special or anything, but it's nice. It's not terrible. Um, the fruits are nice there, and it's, you know, it's easy drinker. I, I, I also went three five. Three five. Yeah. Uh, I gave it a three eight. Uh, flexing that, uh, yeah. flexing that premium <laughs> on us. I mean, I, that, there's nothing wrong with this at all. No, no. But, um, I, I, again, there's nothing that makes it spectacular either. But uh, there, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, I, again, I could drink this all day too. Yeah. Um, uh, the fruits are all good. Uh, it's it's uh, just enough sour to let you know that it's there without going overboard. Um, yeah, no complaints. Yeah. Um, so overall, th have anyone ever been to Colorado? No, no. All right, so one of the crazy things with Colorado <laughs> is it was 70 degrees, 70, 75 degrees on like the main road. And just off to the side of the road, like on this highway, is like a, a, like a skiing resort. And there's and the, no ski, no snow making machines. Mm -hmm. It's snow on the mountains. Like you get out of your car because you're like 14,000 feet. Yeah. yeah, but it's, it's, it's 75 degrees. <laughs> you're in shorts, it's hot, and you can make a snowball. On the side of the road, <laughs> it's so my I, I couldn't I couldn't wrap my head around it. I yeah, I have a I have a buddy that lives there, and he'll be like, "Yeah, it's like seventy five degrees today, but I'm getting eighteen inches of snow tonight." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, all right. Cool. And then they just wake up the next morning and they get in their shorts and swim and their and their hood tank tops and they walk to a ski resort, put a ski clothes on, and go ski all day. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's so weird. Um, the other cool thing is like when you're driving you see just like the mountains all the trees like when you're when you're in colorado and you're leaving there to go into utah it just goes from trees to just rock <laughs> but you see like where all of the the avalanches coming down and all the trees are just snapped and yeah. broken down and all, all over the place it was it was really really cool to just to kind of see the the drastic change from like mountain tops like just going from snow and tree to just dirt rock <laughs> it was wild um all right here's our next one the tommy knocker alpine glacier Pilsner Lager. Ooh, I'm excited about that. I'm going to switch up the glass here. So what did you guys do on your on your weeks off? Anything interesting you, on your Bob, Bob and Rosa? Uh, yeah, road trip from Rosa. Road trip from uh, Rosa. We, we did one. Uh, uh, we went to a brewery in Rahway, New Jersey called Wet Ticket. Okay. And uh, uh, we went to a brewery in Staten Island called Killsboro. Okay. Um, I had a good time at both places. I'd, I'd been to Wet Ticket once before. Uh, 
they do a summer watermelon wheat beer every year and something stupid comes up but i never get to make it mm. before they sell out so that that's the whole reason behind the trip this year was to to get some of the watermelon wheat and you you you're, you snagged a t-shirt you're wearing the t-shirt tonight yeah. and you also brought a can of it for us to try for the patreon nice oh, yeah pretty excited for that i won't ask you how it was then since <laughs> <laughs> um you guys do anything uh i made hot bologna that's oh yeah, yeah. Oh, homemade hot bologna is so good how hot do you make it it depends i don't think it's super hot but I mean, every, I I'll, usually go overboard, but it's always fantastic. I'll, <laughs> I'll make some for for the next show if you want. All right, yeah, we'll give it a shot. Is it? I usually don't like hot things, but I really like Miller's hot bologna because it's like hot, but still it it's like Dude, doing it homemade though. At, oh, it's so good. And it's I, so I'm, simple. I, I used yeah, to love Miller's, easy. but after getting in with a, a lot of people that make their own, like when I go back to it anymore, I just like it. It's a vinegar stick. Yep. Yeah, I think the vinegar for me evens out the hotness. And I, that's why I can eat a bunch of them. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I if the salt milk is expensive. It's so easy to make though. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. I was just trying. Maybe it's one. literally like usually like crushed red pepper and fucking vinegar. <laughs> and that's, that's it. Basically, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty much like if everyone has their own little bit like tit like they're like their boiler recipe. Yeah. They have a little 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 side little yeah. sidebar. Yeah. Interesting. I did, um, I do like chopped garlic, and uh, the crushed red pepper, and then some extra cayenne and stuff. It is crazy if if you're listening to this podcast and you're not from the area, like what, what do you, like you make your own hot bologna, like hop we have hot bologna, and then we have a, a drink called boiler, which we have showcased on the show where it's like a a, what you got, a toddy. Yeah, it's basically it's coal region hot toddy. <laughs> yeah, uh, which is it's it's delicious. But uh, all right, let's get to this Alpine Glacier Lager. I had it pulled up here. I just kind of blew blew by it, but I have it here. Uh, crisp, clean, and refreshing. Brewed with uh, Chinook, uh, Sazak. Saz. Saz, sorry. Saz hops. I'm dumb today. Uh, 5.1 ABV, 3,384 check ins, average of three, two, four. Uh, real quick, too. Tommy Knocker Brewing Company out of Idaho Springs, Colorado. They average a 352, and they have 108 beers they have made so far. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Looking at some collaborations, nothing, nothing I'm familiar with. All right. We'll start with that. We'll start with you, Bob. What do you think? Oh, uh, that's okay. I um, um, I get the maltiness right away. A uh, little bit of caramel. Uh, I get biscuit hints on the finish. Um, again, like we said with the other one, uh, uh, uh there's nothing earth shattering or fantastic about it. But this is a good beer. A lot of flavor. Uh, it's, it's it's well above average. Uh, nothing really makes it stand out. But uh, again, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm I'm going to give this boy a three and a half. Yeah, I went with three and a half as well. Yeah, same. Uh, it's super solid Pilsner. I really like it. Now, here's, I don't know if I'm nice just being crisp. tricked by the name, the Glacier, the Alpine Glacier, but when I drink it, it has, you know how like when Gatorade had that like cool, ta- like, yeah, yeah. It, 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 like when it's you like think Glacier, it like has that, to it that ice flavor. I can't yeah. really describe what I'm, but I, it, that's, this beer has it where it has like that, it almost seems like, like it sounds stupid, but like you're drinking cold, if that makes any sense. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, that's technically what makes it a lager. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fermenting it at low temperatures. Yeah. yeah. It has that like, I just think maybe just the name's tricking me, but it has that like ice flavor. Yeah. Like, No, it's it's super clean. I like I could drink a bunch of these. Yeah. It has I a lot of flavor. This yeah. would be a great barbecue beer. Yep. Yeah. It it stays light, but still drinks with a lot of flavor. Yeah. it's it's. I like this one a lot, but. It's nothing mind blowing, but I was torn between a three seven five three five and this. Yeah, I do like if I had premium, I would do like a three six. I yeah. I did three seven. Three seven. Yeah, you three flexing over here. Yeah. All right. All right. I bought this because I know you boys like your Bach. <laughs> so I brought I got the Butthead Bach by Tommy Knocker, and this is a limited edi- edition Prospector series. So if anyone wants to pull that one up, you guys can read it off. I'll get the first pour here. What's it called again? The Butthead Bach. Butthead one or two words. Butthead two. Head Beveth. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> the Butthead Bach. Has uh, ah. since I was away, did um oh, butthead's actually one word of on the Well on the untapped. can it's not, but on yeah. un- untapped it is. <laughs> This has fifty three check ins, so this will this will make this will make your list of under a hundred. Um, average is a three six four. No write up on this. Yeah, there's no description. It's a bach. <laughs> yeah, it's a bach. Enjoy it. 
Um, I have not had this one, but that looks like a lager, like a Yingling lager, color wise. I mean, that's a Bach. A yeah. Bach is the style of. A Bach is a lager yeah. variant. Yeah, yeah. It's a lager variant. Any any word on what was going on with Yingling and the Ooh, that's nice. and that's bringing sweet. back a beer? Did anything ever come of that? I didn't hear anything. Yeah, they didn't vote after like the vote. They didn't after like the, yeah. So follow. I don't know if it's just going to be a surprise. Maybe, but if they're going to do it like as a seasonal thing, we'll like figure the Bach would be like what fall. Is I think that it when a, it usually yeah. came out like fall like fall winter. Wow, I like it. It's like a caramel bomb when you first, like you get all that malt and caramel. That's that's tasty. Now I've never had Yingling Bach. This doesn't taste like a Yingling Bach. No, Yingling Bach's its own monster. Of it. yeah. it's a very dark Bach. Yeah, I know. I always remember seeing it being darker. Um, I'm I'm into this a lot. No, this is this is yeah. it's like the caramel and the sweetness. It's oh, the like but like that malt, like real nice maltiness as well. Like it's. Ooh. Yeah, I really is, like this. This is a banger. Well, Bill, we'll, we'll start with you here. Uh, I'm gonna go four point two. Whoa! Uh, broke three. Yeah. Protect the four. You went over. Um, I'm actually, um, I'm breaking it too. Andrew, yeah. I'm going four. Four, ma'am. Bob, quattro. You're going four. I'm going four two five as well. This is really really good. Um, this would be a fantastic fall beer. Yeah. Like sitting around a campfire type, it or, kind of, or in front of the fireplace, yeah, or uh, or a fantastic in any time of year in Colorado. Beer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's winter at night, but it's summer at day. <laughs> it gets really fucking cold in the desert too at night. Oh yeah, I did not know that. Oh yeah, the desert gets like super cold. Yeah, the, the the first time I went to California, I only brought shorts, and my aunt was like, "Only shorts?" I'm like, <laughs> well, yeah, it's California. She said, "No, we're going in here buying jeans." <laughs> <laughs> That's like. A, when I was in the service, we'd be out at 29 Palms, like, like, even in the middle of July. Um, uh, it'd be like 120 degrees during the day, like like road top temperature. It'd still be over 100 in the shade. And at, at nighttime, it, it would drop to, you'd think, oh, it's 75 at night. Well, yeah, I mean, but it's, it's 50 degrees colder than another. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's that shock. Yeah. Like, I remember when I used to work at, the Walmart distribution center where I take people on a tour, like I go into the negative 20 freezer to show them like this, you're going to work into this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, but like you'd walk out of the negative 20 into the negative 10 and you would feel more like you feel slightly warmer, but then you walk into a 33 degree temperature and it's like, it feels like it's 90 degrees. <laughs> yeah. The, um, it's like my nose hairs were just freezing and now I'm sweating. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they were, when we walked around Cal uh, California, they were, uh, it was, it was windy and everyone, most of the trip were like, man, it's a little chilly. I thought it was perfect temperature. It was, it was cool. Like it was still yep. sort weather for me, but, um, I'll go with a little bit of our leg of our trip here. So we, we draw, we fly to Colorado, then drive Utah, the, then to San Diego. We pick Austin up and we start our trip with, uh, um, lost winds brewing company, um, which no, no, no. Artifacts. Artifacts we went to first. Really, really good. Um, I believe we got a flight there. I'm just kind of going off memory. I don't remember every single beer we had, but it was a good brewery. I really enjoyed it. They actually shared us on uh, Instagram. Nice. So so thank you to those guys for doing it. Um, then we went from there to Lost Winds. Lost Winds was really, really cool. Uh, the people behind it, like the people who were working there were one of the first breweries we experienced on our trip where they were like super talkative to us. The people who were working there were really, really nice. Um, I had a great conversation with them, bought a hat there just because they really showcased like if, I, and, and this isn't a knock to other breweries, but like if your staff is willing to sit and have a conversation with you and it's not very busy, like it wasn't very busy. So they yeah. were able to do it. Um, and I got to learn a little bit about the brewery and what they do and how they do things. And I really, really enjoyed their stuff. They unfortunately did not have flights, but they were like, Oh, you want it? Like they were, you were able to just kind of hang out there. Uh, you were definitely in California because uh, they were like, man, that's radical. That's yeah. rad. And, you know, I was like, Oh, here we are. Um, super cool place. Really like them. Uh, they had a few beers that I actually have one of their beers, a lager for us to try on the Patreon. Um, but they were re really cool people. And then we were telling them how we want to go, hopefully try to, I, tr I was trying for pops to swing towards through Anaheim on the way out, but it just unfortunately didn't happen because through Anaheim is bottle logic. Mm. Were you here when, when, uh, they, we had the bottle logic with, um, Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bottle Logic makes yeah. insanely good stouts. 
very good stouts. And out here, Bottle Logic stouts go for people are trading like PS5s for them. <laughs> they're they're very very good. I don't even like stouts, and I, I there hasn't been a Bottle Logic stout I didn't like. Nice. Yeah, they're really good. Um, so we were hoping to go there, but we couldn't. They're like, oh, you want like you know about Bottle Logic? I was like, yeah, they're it, it's they're they're popular in the trade scene, but I'm not looking to trade. I just want to actually try them. Um, she's like, they were just here the other day and gave us a bunch of beers. Do you want a couple? I was like, <laughs> if you don't mind. And she gave us two bottle logics, but they weren't even stouts. They were like IPAs and a sour. I should probably check on that. And um, <laughs> and they were really good. But if you guys want to pour the next one, get it ready. Cool. Yeah, I got it. All right. Next one up, we have the maple nut brown ale. Holy oh, shit. We haven't had a brown ale in a long time. This is a style that I feel like under underappreciated. Like I miss the Trogues like nut brown ale. Yeah. Like I don't think they do that anymore. I, know, I always used to get into the uh Adnans from England. Oh yes, yes. Like the classics. But um yeah, like this an underrepresented style these days. Like I remember like when like craft beer started to like become more of a thing and like there was a lot more brown ales around. I was I just came Got my copy of Mario Tennis. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you got the brown owl going? Yep. Yep. Did you guys read it off yet? Not yet. I'm actually going to hang on to that box a little bit. I'm gonna. That's going to be my sipper. Um, all right. I believe everyone. Here, I'll give you a little. You, I had a big pour last time. Yeah, we're just saying that like uh, brown ale, you don't see brown ales as often anymore. Like they're... When I first started drinking craft beer, when it started becoming more of a thing, there's a lot more brown ales around. Like you're saying, the, the Trogue's like Rugged Trail Nut. Well, who's Rugged Trail Nut Brown Ale? Remember? <laughs> Is that Trogue? Yeah, I think it was them. Yeah, because that was a seasonal release, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Trogue's Rugged Trail Nut Brown Ale. That was always a really good one. Uh, and then the classic, like Newcastle. Yep. Yeah, which we haven't seen Newcastle. We haven't gotten it in, in a while. I haven't seen it around really? because it changed hands. Like Lagunitas was brewing it instead of it being brewed over in England. Over in England, but they okay. were using the same recipe. But people lost their minds about it. Like, <laughs> like the dough. Ooh. Oh, it's not the same. Like, but, but that's that's actually a fairly common practice now. Um, if you look at a lot of bottles, uh, they're not really imported. They have yeah. contract brewing agreements with people here. Yep. Well, yeah, and and it makes sense to use Lagunitas because Heineken owns them. Yeah. So this is a flavorful brown ale with a touch of pure maple syrup. I hope that what maple up, syrup is not strong. Yeah. So Cheese was says, "What's up, dudes?" And he said, "Because brown ales are booty buns." <laughs> so I don't think he likes brown ales. <laughs> um. Yeah. This is a four point five, twenty seven thousand check ins. Average of three five, uh, three five three. Ten friends have checked this in. So this is a beer that has made its way. Uh, I guess to this side of the this side of the country. You know what? Looking at this, I feel like Weiss had this for a while. It looks very familiar, and, and I think we had it too at one point. Uh, Andrew, you've actually had this before. Have I? You had <laughs> in December ninth, two thousand sixteen. All right. Uh, don't look at what you're scored at though. Are you? It's already going to pull up. I guess. Yeah. So, let's see if it changes or stays the same. Yeah, I was gonna say you you drank this before. All right, cool. Um. Yeah, that, I gave it a three. I look, yeah, I I looked at him like I'm actually gonna up that to three seven five. I All right, I really like this. I don't think it's quite a four, but it's it's a nice brown ale. Like it's not like the maple's slightly there, and you get the real nice caramel and the roastiness of the brown ale. Yeah, and it's it's very lagery. I feel like this is like a Cracker Barrel beer. Beer, like if you were at a Cracker Barrel, this is what they they should serve brown ales. Yeah, yeah. this is yeah, this that, is nice. Yeah, that's it. All of them. Yeah, <laughs> just honey brown and uh, dude, honey brown, <laughs> low key one of my favorite beers. I don't care. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go three seven five on this. I like it. There's the the maple syrup is perfect. I don't like maple syrup and I love maple syrup, but like not in my beer. It's not overpowering. That's yeah. that's my biggest gripe. Any adjunct that goes in it is if it's overpowering and it like takes out anything else of the beer is when I get annoyed by it. I smother everything in maple syrup. I call maple syrup. Is like the A1 steak sauce <laughs> of breakfast. Like you just yeah. pour it on your eggs, on everything. Not eggs, I don't know if I would agree with eggs. I pour it on everything. But sausage, bacon, scrapple, hell yeah. Yes. Uh, I actually like also my gravy of 
breakfast is I get over easy and then I break the yolks and just I, I dip my everything in it. Oh yeah, I do that too. Yeah, yeah I, everyone on, on the whole trip was grossed out that I was doing that. I'm like, that's that gives everything. That's dip my bacon, dip my toast. Yeah, and then the syrup, the whole of it. But the syrup, I don't. The thought don't of know drinking that. syrup <laughs> grosses me out. <laughs> but I can put it on all my food. <laughs> it's like on. Super troopers. Yes. Like I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> chuck I couldn't. the bottle yeah. <laughs> or like bubbles. Bubbles is always drinking on yeah. uh, trailer park boys. Uh, but yeah, this is a good brown ale. Um, where's I for Colorado? Uh, San Diego, um, sorry, San Diego area. The only other place we really went to after there was, uh, it was really? called pizza, pizza plus. I don't know. Pizza something. I keep saying pizza boy, but it's not pizza boy, but that was kind of cool. It was like a pizza shop with brew beer. The only, the only downside to them is no, once again, no flights had to buy in a full pint. You couldn't get even smaller pours. And they had a lot of like, they reminded me a lot of like what we would get out here. So they very heavily pop culture themed beers. Like they had a really cool Star Wars one where it's like, like uh, I forget what it was named. Like the, it was like a Han Solo beer. Yep. I was like, man, I want to try that. And like, the only way you can get it is if you buy a four pack. I'm like, <laughs> you don't even have it on tap? And they're like, no, we didn't tap it. It's only in can. And I was like, I'm not buying a full, like, you know, I wish I would have had more I can have tro- like traveled with, but we yeah. were so packed on, on bags. Um, but it was, uh, that was the only knock I had for them is they had so much variety, but not enough to try. Like if you're traveling, it was hard to try a bunch of their stuff at one yeah, time. Yeah. So they kind of flew under my radar because I only got to really try one of their beers, but it was, uh, it was a cool trip. The pizza was decent for being, I guess, West coast pizza. Yeah. Um, it was all right, but I don't know. I, I think so. I think just be, uh, East coast snob. I think our pizza is different. What uh? It, 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 what, what would you rate it on the uh, barstool scale? <laughs> uh, I'll give I'll give that pizza like a like a two seven five. Oh wow, <laughs> that's real bad. <laughs> it's not bad. It's edible, but out of a ten. Oh, out of ten. No, you know oh. pizza reviews. Barstool? I'm sorry, I was going. I was. I haven't. Um, uh, let's see. I like like a four or five. Okay, uh, that's edible. It was a step up to over Domino's. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. It didn't blow me away. But it was good pizza. I mean, I, I would have eaten it. And being drunk and leaving two yeah. other breweries, it tasted amazing. But I was like, the sauce, it's not the same type of sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking California. <laughs> Where else did we go to have? We had, we had pizza somewhere else on our trip. And I was actually like, this is decent pizza. Oh, we did burgers. Well, it was California? This was California, okay. yeah. Um, somewhere else in the state, we stopped and had pizza. And I was, I was impressed by it. Um, before the vacation even started, this is hilarious. We, we get off. We, fly, we, we drive into Jersey. And we're like, Barf. where can we go <laughs> just to hang out and get food? And the way the lady behind the counter is like, you need to go to the, uh, what the hell was the name of it? The club or something, um, the penthouse or whatever. I don't remember. Um, so we're like, all right, cool. And we pull up and it's just like disco lights and just pumping the newest rap song ever. And we, <laughs> me, my dad and Heidi walk in. I'm wearing a wrestling t-shirt, cut off jeans and big ass shoes. Like my dad is my dad and Heidi's just like bumming it because we were just like, just got done driving. And we walk into like a club where like people <laughs> like are dressed to the nines. Like <laughs> everyone's twerking. <laughs> like, <laughs> like lights going off and all hip hop music. And uh, the guy looked at us like, the fuck are you doing here? And we're like, this is like this is where our shuttle took us. Um, we we go in there, we go to the bar. Uh, you didn't log a beer from it. Uh, I did. Did you? Yeah, it was one of my first one of the trip. I, I logged a, um, I logged two of them actually. Um, but it was it, I forget what the name of it was, but it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> we definitely did not. <laughs> we we stood out like people came and sat in the bar next to us and were like, "Fuck, are you doing here?" And I was like. <laughs> I'm eating. Where's your velvet blazer? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't even velvet blazer. No, it was it was a hip hop club. Yeah, I'm like, just saying it yeah. funny. Uh, mm-hmm. It was really really funny. And then I was like, "Can you put the hockey game on?" And they're like, "Yeah, no problem." So they put the hockey game on, but right above the TV was a red strobe light. So like they would take a shot, and the red strobe light would go off, and I'm like, "Fuck!" Because I was like, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I thought someone scored, but they didn't. I was like, it is so stressful watching a hockey game in a club that has a red light above the TV. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. I forget where we, where where it was. I, yeah, but it was really really funny. Um, but that was our first stop of the trip. Was that place? Um, I got a stick. 
I got a surf and turf in a in a club. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually pretty good. <laughs> they made fun of me the whole time. Like, you got a steak in Jersey? I'm like, leave me alone. <laughs> made a sore rat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the the beer you are guys are like what the fuck are you doing there are <laughs> the yeah the beer you are we're like what the fuck are you doing there and I'm like we this is we were told to go um, by our hotel but it was uh, it was a trip nice all right what are we cracking here this one all was, right this so, is this is their this is like their beer this I is the like one I may have had this this beer. has traveled here yes uh, blood orange IPA from Tommy Knocker I'm going to read the little back of the thing here because it's kind of cool. So Tommy Knocker slipped into the mining camps of the Idaho Springs in the 1800s with the discovery of gold in our mountains and streams. These mischievous elves, though hardly ever seen, were often heard singing and working. They guided many fortunate miners from harm's way and to the gold they sought. It sounds more of a gnome thing than an elf yeah. thing. <laughs> yes, and he looks more like a gnome. Yes. <laughs> So no. I think because I think the whole thing with the leprechaun and stuff is like when you hear them, it's probably a good sign yeah. of they're helping you or it's lucky. Um, but there are 16,000 check-ins for this. Average is a 375. Ooh, that's got some. Like as soon as I crack that can, I smell the blood orange. Yeah, this is a real. I, I really enjoy this beer. I'm not going to lie. It's I got really, a bit of cat pissy to it too. Yeah. The, the only other blood orange I can really compare this to is uh, Flying Dogs, Raging Bitch. Yeah. That's like a really popular blood orange beer. But this does travel here. But this you is know a, what? There is actually a brewery that reminds me. They're in Maryland that remind. I cannot think of the name of it. We had it in uh, Harper's Ferry the one time in West Virginia. That it was a similar theme brewery, but it's from that area. I cannot remember what the hell it's called. I'd have to look it up. Yeah. So this is an Indian pale ale brewed with Citra Summit. Uh, Mandarin and Bavara, Mosaic and Cynic hops uh, and blood orange peels. Um, I won't tell you what I scored it, but I, spoiler alert, I really like this beer. Hmm. But this does come to our area. You can't, I, I believe when I seen this, um, it may actually be at the, the craft house, uh, the, like uh, the cake, uh, the craft house, like very recently, it was just there. I think so. Yeah. 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 I think I remember put, putting it out not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, this, this is a beer that if, if you see it, I would say if you see it in the area, get it. It is something that you can get locally, especially in mine. I have well. had this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This, this travels and it's crazy because this is just a little tiny brew pub with, with tanks inside of it. Like they don't have secondary locations. I had, it was a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it they travel. They travel very well. This is a pretty fun brewery. Um, oh, that's my desk in my room, so I bought it somewhere around here. <laughs> yeah. What did you score it then? I gave it a four. There you go. I don't know if I'm going to give it a four now, though. Really? Like, it's good. I really like this. The blood orange, it nails the blood orange, though. Like, yeah. I don't know if you've ever have you had blood oranges. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they're almost like grapefruity. It's, yeah, yeah, I love grapefruit. Yeah. And like it nails the blood orange flavor. Uh, I gave this a four or five. I would drink these all day. If I if I if I came yeah. across these locally, I would I would buy them. I give it a three nine five. So I'm not gonna change my score. <laughs> three nine five. <laughs> um Chiefs, but if you're still hanging out, what are you drinking today, brother? I'm gonna uh, go three three eight. Three eight. Yeah. Oh man, I'm really I'm really pumping them up here. I like their cans. Actually, I'm too. gonna go down to yeah. three seven five. My current tastes. I, I I don't think it's a four. I I like it, but I don't really like grapefruit. I always think I'm gonna like grapefruit, and then forget that I don't like. It grapefruit. definitely has that like, <laughs> so it had, like because it's reminding me a little of grapefruit. That's why. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I I think I think I have. It smells fantastic. Yeah, though. holy yeah. shit. I think I have rose colored glasses on because I was actually there. I think that's definitely what's happening to me. But I I really I like it. Uh, I, I like it too. Uh, I'm going with a four on this one. Um, like Andy said, uh, the, the blood orange is nailed, uh, just the right amount of hops bitter on the back end. That's pretty smooth. This is a tasty beer. I like it. All right. Um, I won't go through the whole trip in every brewery, but I will say this real quick before we get, um, through, I got to experience the, uh, Ellis Island brewery in, in Vegas. Um, that was two seventy five of beer in nice. Vegas, which I was like. Can we stay here all day? <laughs> um, did not know leaving that place that if when you're when you leave Ellis Island Brewers Company and Hotel and you look towards like if you go to the corner and the left is 
like the flamingo, that's the corner Tupac was killed. Oh, really? Yep. That's where the Tupac shot shooting happened. I did not know that until after we left. Um, allegedly happened. Allegedly <laughs> happened. Um, then the uh, we didn't really other do anything else in Vegas. I know there's a few other breweries there. Uh, I had Sin City when I was there last time. I wasn't impressed. The other other breweries on Fremont Street, we didn't have time to do. Um, and it was some place where you, when you went in, you couldn't do a flight, and it was like you had to sit in a table. Like just because COVID, it made it very challenging. Uh, oh, Idaho, uh, Utah. I don't. I'm trying to remember. I, Moab. We went to Moab Brewing. That was fun. But for Colorado, the uh, I think the highlight of the entire trip was Left Hand Brewing Company. Um, we came in. We, we we were the first ones there. We were hanging out. The bartender came over. She's like, "What do you think?" I said, "Listen, I do a beer podcast, and I think some of these beers are really really good. I like it. I've had Left Hand before." Uh, then she came over and then the other bartender came over cause he's like, I love podcasts. So I have his information. I just didn't get to add him yet. So if you're listening, I didn't forget about you. I just have to go cause we're still unpacking and Heidi took his information and put it in her, one yeah. of her purses. Um, but he wants to come on the show and drink left hand oh, be beers awesome. with us cause he works there. And cause that, that's another brewery too. When you work there and they have like four buildings, like they have their brewery, then across the street, they have another building then down the street, they have another one. So they have expanded tremendously and they do very, very well. Um, you have a friend who used to work there and like she worked in like their chemistry. Yeah. But they'll, spot. they do the same thing kind of like Brew Daddy did. Remember when Brew Daddy's servers were like, hey, they bring us in and they let us brew a beer. Yeah. Like, and then we name it our beer. That's cool. They do the same thing with their staff there. Nice. So I was like, that's cool. And they came out, they brought us this barrel age that doesn't even really exist or like they don't serve to people and they're like, try this and try that. And if you like this, you'll like that. And they just kept bringing us beers. That's awesome. They were so, so nice to us. And, uh, Big, I, I became a big fan of, of of what they do and and what they what they stand for, and I learned a lot about their brewery. I don't want to go too much into it because we're gonna have him come on and he'll tell more of the story yeah. of the name and how it came about. But um, I did buy a hat when I was there, and it's like a corduroy hat that has <laughs> the hand with the Colorado logo oh, on nice. it. Nice. <clears throat> and then I added the uh, the I have your stuff too. Remind me. Oh, cool. Yeah. Show's over. But we went to the the heavy metal bar. Yeah. <laughs> Not as impressed. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you said it was like a Starbucks. It was a Starbucks <laughs> with black walls. <laughs> it was, uh, I was going in like thinking, oh, they're going to be blasting heavy metal music. I'm going to love this. And I came in and there was only one dude in the whole place that looked like he was into heavy metal. <laughs> and he like long hair, he had the defined jaw. Like he looked like he was a front man of a band. He looked, <laughs> he, he looked fucking up. I kept staring at him and he kept like looking at me like, I'll fucking kill you. And I was like, no, I just like the way you look. Like, you look like a wrestler. He was always so cool looking. But like everyone's kind of working off laptops and the music was almost mute. Yeah. And then next, we went, need to be there on a Friday or Saturday night or something. For everyone that told me, they said, if you go later at night, they crank the music up and there's a pawn shop next to all well, a thrift store. Oh, thrift stores even a negative term i was i learned um a, i don't know a, a fucking it was a thrift store and i i went in next door and i bought a bunch of stuff heidi bought stuff too and i wanted to buy a hat it said this butts for you budweiser <laughs> and it was all like the butts but it was embroidered oh, and Heidi was like you're not fucking buying that and i was like <laughs> i want it i want it so bad but she did not buy it for me oh was man pissed off about <laughs> um but i got a bunch of patches i got a rocky horror a motley crew and, oh. a, and a van halen patch nice to put on my jackets but yeah the the, the heavy metal bar the beer was good no flights you only can try so many they have little smaller pours um but I, I was kind of hoping to have a little more music and a little more atmosphere, but it was it was fun. I just a little let down. But the horror bar was fun, was it? Yeah, that was really cool. They have like a bunch of TV screens, and then later on at night at like eight o'clock, they turn all the lights off in the place and they project an old school horror movie on oh, the that's wall, awesome. and everyone just hangs out there. That's really fucking um, cool. We got to meet a girl from uh, that was on the TV show uh, Haunted on Netflix, and she told her like ghost story. And then the only reason we met her, she's like, you know, we're going to this place in Pennsylvania called the Mah Mahoning Drive-In and we're going to go see oh, the movies nice. there because yeah. I'm re my boyfriend are really, really into horror movies. And we were told that like that, that's one of the coolest places to go in Pennsylvania is that drive-in. And I was like, we're from there. And that's yeah. like right by yeah, us. It's like, like 30 like, minutes away. Yeah, yeah. like 45 minutes at, at most. Yeah. I, saw, I told her if you make a weekend out of it, 
we will fucking hang out with you. We'll take you like you go to the drive-in on a Friday or Saturday and we'll chill with you and we'll we'll take you around, go see a band. Like we'll we'll make an experience for you. Like we'll we'll even have a horror movie night or a game night or something. Like so she's from Colorado and she's she's probably gonna come do a podcast with us. Nice. Yeah, she's super cool. But she was on the to show I don't know if she's going to the uh the Joe Bob extravaganza. Probably. Yeah, the, they, uh, they have Bob which one that was like or... the last drive in on Shutter. He used to do Monster Vision on TNT. Back in their like early nineties, he's like the horror dude. Yeah, and yeah. like it was always so cool. Like that's how I like grew up on horror. Mm-hmm. But like they announced tickets too soon, or too when they announced tickets for his thing in the Mahoning Drive-In, it was like I'm like fuck, I don't have any money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but she, they haven't picked out their date yet. But they said so as soon as they do, I said hit me up, and we'll uh, we'll hang out. We'll it all depend around. on when it, when it is because like end of August is Camp Blood, usually too there. You know, I messed up the mall. Remember the 24th, like the dust till dawn? Yeah. Where you went in at seven o'clock at night and left at seven in the morning. I want to do a, like, <laughs> it's hard to do in a house, but I want to do like a, a literally a dust till dawn at like in a party at a house. Oh, uh, no, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I have a projector like that we can like hook an Apple TV or Dude, whatever. Dude, we could fucking ho- project can... to the side of your house. I yeah. thought about that, but I don't know how tents, well it'll work. And put yeah, tents mm, in your yard. We can try it. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll come over. One night and bring the yeah, projector. We'll, we'll play and we'll with just that. I mean, try it Marish out. and I actually were talking. I'm like, shit, I would like, like, I was looking at our yard. Or like, even hook up get, like, like a screen, or or even hook up like a Twitch and play Mario Kart. Or <laughs> Dude, <laughs> we went to Tyler, Tyler Smar puts a projector on the side of his house, and he lives out in the middle of nowhere in ha- hometown. And we were out there playing NHL hockey in his <laughs> yard. <laughs> it was nice. awesome. But yeah, no, we, I, that's actually something I was thinking about. I'm like, fuck, we're starting to like get our yard together and shit. I'm like, fuck, it'd be cool to do like a movie out here. Yeah. Looks like a good time. Uh, let's get our last beer done here, and then we'll we'll jump into the uh, Patreon so we can get that recording, get you guys out of here. If you're if you are hanging out later, if you want to go home and come back, we are doing the AEW pay per view tonight. If you want to hang out, but this last one is the Pills um, Pills Pills Assad Palisade. Thank you, Peachwood <laughs> <laughs> Peachwood Cream Ale. So this Ooh, is a, a cream ale, a cream ale with peaches, or is it? But you said peach wood. That's different. Peach than wood, peaches. yes. Peach wood. It's like a fucking Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> I just seen peach and I, I was like, this is fucking going to be awesome. It's a peach cream ale. I always wanted a peach cream ale. The North Brewing Company said they might make us a peach cream ale. Um, North, and the North Brewing Company is coming to Brewfest. Yeah. Yep. We're still debating. If we're going to do a tent that day, or if we're just going to go around and enjoy the event. I think we should just go around and join. I think so, too. And just hand, hand stickers yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Did they pick a date for yep. the July yep. 31st? Yeah. July, July 31st. 31st. If, yeah. July, yep. The tickets go on sale June 4th. Yeah. I think that's a good move. I think maybe we, we just kind of walk around as a group and go explore stuff, and then we can come talk about it later. Yeah. Um, I, I like that idea. Maybe the following year, when we have more time to prep, we can do... We can do a table again, uh, or maybe if we grow more, we can do yeah. a table. But uh, I, I like the idea of walking around and enjoying. Yeah, it. I think just experiencing it, and then we can have a show about it. Yeah, maybe we could do like little clips. Yeah, like we can do just like mobile clips and throw them together or something. I could probably ask Nikolai to come around and like film or take yeah. photos with us because that's what we did last time. It was really fun. Um, but yeah, the uh, I'm getting stickers made where it's going to be our logos, and then on the bottom of the logo, it's going to be like follow us at and then we're going to add all the social media tags because when i was on the road i was like man i wish i had a set of stickers with me to give to people but as well like the route 66 signs and stuff people were like tagging yeah. with stickers yeah but like you look at a sticker and it's like pete's this and you're like what the fuck does pete do you have no idea but if it said like follow us on social media i'd be like oh I go, i'm gonna go search that so it kind of draws your eye to it more if you've seen like a twitter logo or something so i'm gonna make stickers like that to get them out there to the, the tag everywhere but uh but this is the 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 cream the cream ale peach wood we'll start with you bob what do you think here it does have a little bit of peachy hint to it but yeah. i mean that's not peach uh that's a solid cream ale yeah um so the this is there there's not one peach using this this is literally just the wood this is just pa- aged in the in the barrels like they, they have wood chips in or yeah the the, the, bar- the barrels they they soak it in that's it, it I that mean, like some, some of the oil still leaks i mean 
it's got peachy hints and yeah, definitely yeah. anybody who's expecting a, a real peach you're, you're gonna yeah, be no, disappointed but, but but this isn't bad yeah um there's that you can taste that woodiness to it too but mm -hmm. i can't i've never had anything in peach wood so it's kind of weird i'd probably give this a three eight or a three nine yeah i yeah. fell in love with this beer this is this is a four two five for me this was excellent i thought this was really cool the fact it had that strong a peach flavor um and there's not one actual peach used in it i thought was pretty impressive I go three five. Um, there's there's a little bit of weirdness to the wood. I think, like it's a, I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> I want to say like meaty. Yeah, I still want a cream ale with actual peaches though. I still want to. I want to find that beer. I want that beer to I'm exist sure in my exists. life. We'll find it. I I, I fall in love with the cream ale. So it's those those upstate New York boys got me. Uh, I almost bought a case of Jenny cream ale because I was looking for cheap stuff for a cookout. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't go wrong with a cream ale. I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, do I really want it sitting in my fridge that long? <laughs> well, yeah. A, a 30 pack, I mean, you're not going to run through that no. in a day. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. that's my problem, like drinking at home. Like, if I have like normal beers in the fridge, like, I don't go out of my way to drink them. Yeah. But if I have like good beers in the fridge, I'm plowing them down every night. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> crushing them. I just yeah. can't help it. Um, well, let's get, let's, uh, let's start the party here. Beer, ooh, beer of the night. I'll start with you, Bill. Oh boy. Um, no pressure. No, oh, my phone just no, died. None, none at all. Um, I'm gonna go with the Bach. The Bach was really good. It's this is tough for me because the ones I had on the on my taster, some of them I didn't have until just right now, and the Bach is one of them, and it really impressed me. I'm still sipping on it. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, I was pretty fond of the bark too, but I think uh, Mr. Blood Orange is my pick of the night. Andrew. Mr. Bach. Yingling, bring back the Bach. <laughs> the butthead wins it tonight uh, for the Beer of the Night, the Prospector Limited Edition Series for the Bach um, Tommy Knockers. Let's go runner up. I'll go first because I went last. I will go with the. Shocking. I really, 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 really like the Blood Orange IPA. Um, but as a shocker to me, I really like the brown ale. You know what? I can support that. I always don't go for my pick with what which I scored the highest. My highest scored beer was the Blood Orange and the Peach. But I for me, these are two beers that I didn't have before I was there, and they're styles that I usually don't go to, and they did a really good job on. Yeah, I can support the brown ale, actually. Yeah. Bill. Mm. I'm between a brown ale and the peach wood. Peach wood's um, fantastic too. Spoiler uh, alert, that might be my third place. That's uh I'll go with the brown ale. Brown ale? Yeah. Bob, are, are you going brown ale? Are you gonna race a pick or are you just gonna stick with us? I I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, 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 they were they were both good. Um, to be honest, I think I like the, the cream ale better. Um I don't mind being the odd man out. All right, there you go. <laughs> well, the brown ale, you can keep the peach out there for That's my third place pick. Yeah, third. Yeah, why not? All right, peach gets third. So the Bach, brown ale, and cream ale, peach wood, is our beers of the night. Um, overall presentation, it's hard to pick the overall because they're all – Yeah, I, I will say this. You're, the only, I do like their logo. Their gnomish-looking dude is the Bach can is really the only difference. There is a – a rip to unzip on each can. I'm, I've been curious the whole time to look at what it does. So I guess if you want to, if you're someone who keeps labels, you can open it and keep your label. So that's kind of cool. If you're into that, it has a little rip to unzip and you can keep your label, which is fun. There it is. It's not a sticker. It's just like a piece of plastic, but you can throw the can out. Look at where it is like a, Armband. An armband. Yeah. <laughs> it could be your gonna be able to make a bracer out yeah. of it. Yeah, like a sweat band. Yeah. <laughs> I will or say if this. If you want to drink another beer, like a Miller Lite or something, and throw this around. <laughs> yeah, pretend you're drinking, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> pretend you're drinking a yeah. good beer. Yep. <laughs> um <laughs> I will say this overall presentation, the brewery, I love your cans. I think they're very colorful, vibrant. I think if they're on a shelf, they're gonna stand out. I really enjoy your logo. I love the Tommy Knocker with the little miner hat. I think he stands out. I think it's simple. I think it's clean. It's a logo you can throw in any color scheme, embroider. It's, yeah. just, it's just nice. I like it a lot. Um, 
like I said, your brew house is beautiful. The outside seating thing was cool where it looked like a little mining town with That's the little cool. tents. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And it, the fact that it travels all the way to Pennsylvania here is yep. super cool. Uh, definitely keep an eye on it. If you go to the, if you go to any place, be like, Hey, can you guys get Tommy knocker? I'm sure they can find a way to do it. Shangy's, I guess it probably finds I'm, a way to I'm get sure it. That's probably who we get it off of. Anything in closing? What do you got? A uh, little bit of local brew news that I didn't see mentioned anywhere else. Uh, I feel bad now because I don't remember the name, <laughs> but uh, some somewhere here in the relatively short term future, there's supposed to be a microbrewery opening in Jim Thorpe. Oh, nice. oh yeah! Oh my God, that and that's what that town needs some breweries. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, the old Red Castle Brewery. Uh, cave brewing from Bethlehem. Uh, I don't know if they bought it or they lease it or whatever, but, um, that's going to be there. Uh, supposedly it already is. Uh, if, if, it would, if I wouldn't have been here for the show today, I was gonna, actually going to go and check that out. Okay. But, um, that's supposedly cave brewing's new tap room. Oh, nice. Oh, cool. That's I, a cool building too. I think Wolf just opened up too, didn't they? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I was going to go last. Yeah, that's what that in Sunday. I Mechanicsburg, yeah, I think yeah. it is. Next Sunday. I I was thinking about it. Maybe I was, next. Let's do that yeah. next Sunday. Let's go to Wolf. Are you guys down on it? Can probably do that. Yeah. Let's see. I don't think I'm doing. I can't check my phone. It's dead. <laughs> um, I know you wanted to bring something up here for the end. Uh, you kind of talked about it in the chat. I, I you probably know more about it than I do. But uh, while we were off, some some beer news. Um, on Instagram, uh, one of the uh, a person came out and she was talking about people's telling their stories of oh uh, yeah about uh, women being yeah. treated poorly uh, in the beer world. Yeah, just that they uh she had just made kind of like an offhanded post uh on her account about how she was treated. I think she worked for I think Brewdog. They were opening a new location and she was overseeing the build of the new brew house. Can you give me a charger? And they uh when she came back after all the COVID stuff and everything started up, like the way that the people that were hooking everything up were treating her as like a head brewer where they were making her kind of justify why she has the job versus. So then she posted about it and then a bunch of female brewers and people that worked at breweries that were female had started to post about how they were treated by like management and the Pretty other brewer that the women aren't being treated on the same level as like, the men yeah, when it comes to like, I can brew beer that, too. Yeah. And when they go to like to conferences for whatever, like they have to justify why they're there and why they're brewers. And the men is just like they don't have to, they just talk to each other and they don't have to answer questions or anything. So I it's just like, bitch, I like beer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, but um, there was a lot of fallout about that, yeah. That, yeah, that there was like uh. Fucking tired hands got dragged tired through hands the cold. Got which dragged through, and uh, I fucking their beers are good, but that place is so pretentious as fuck. Uh, Beginning, I, I thought that guy was gone now. Yeah, apparently yeah, they're, he, they're he stepped away. And they guy stepped away. He was a huge and, uh, fucking scumbag anyway. And really. he, like he apologized without apologizing. Yeah, it was like, like a he backhanded one of those, apology. Yeah, one of, yeah. And then, uh, but then stepped away from everything. Didn't evil genius the, get in he, trouble too? Uh, yeah, evil genius was called out too. There, I don't think the. One the one co-owner stepped away, but he did step away from like the beer the Philly uh, group that they have. I guess he stepped away from being head of that, and then so it's just like there are a lot of good beers out there that well, look, are brewed look, by women. Look at Reading fucking Stouds. Yep. Yeah. Well, that, that that's very yeah. Because if you watch the Port and PA documentary, they talk about how the husband opened a winery and she wanted to open up a brewery. Yeah. So that's like the opposite of what you would think. Mm -hmm. Like you would think that just, just let's, let's break these norms. You yeah. know what I mean? Like who cares about gender or fucking race? Oh, when I, when I say don't care, I'm not saying ignore the issues, but like everyone has a fucking shake at this. It, yeah. Like we were talking to Harris family and they're like, because we're black, they don't think we want to make good like beers like everybody else. I think we only want one style or like we don't get taken seriously. And I, I, I just, I just think those norms are fucking stupid. Like everyone has a seat at the table. And let's have some fun here. If you're a woman and you're a brewery, oh, you make great beer. Fucking awesome. Like, I don't give yeah. a fuck if you no. are not a human and you make good beer. <laughs> like bring it on. Yeah, we want. Yeah, we want like like a, a, yeah, some yeah. weird like fucking <laughs> person. Like, hey, do or, it, man. Yeah, or, yeah, or like a robot. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about a robot. That's just. I don't, know, I don't trust the robots. No, <laughs> you want Terminators? <laughs> That's how you get Terminators. That's how, they, <laughs> that is how you get Terminators. <laughs> they, yeah, they lure you in with the beer, and then they 
they murder you. I will say this terminated. here at I will make this clear here at uh, Bang and Beers podcast, all races, creeds, sexual orientations, genders are all welcome here on our podcast. You make good beer, man. We'll drink it unless we, you're from Shenandoah. Unless you're from Shenandoah, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You just stick the pierogies and shut the fuck up. Oh, I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm townist, <laughs> and there is a one in uh, I think Cherry Hill, New Jersey. That uh, is female owned, operated, and uh, it, it looks pretty neat. It's like a. Uh, Which one? Um, I think it's called Lost Boardwalk. So the oh, theme, yeah, I've yeah, been there. Yeah. 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 It, it just, it just create. It, I mean, a part of, and I know like the one side of the spectrum is like, oh, here's another fucking cancel culture. Like, no, like this, yeah, this stuff needs to be brought to the limelight. Like, dick. No. Yeah. Like, there's a difference like, between cancel culture and just being a shitty person. It's the fact that like there's plenty of beers you probably drank that were brewed by a female and you don't know it. Yeah. And and you didn't grow tits. You, yeah. yeah. What? Oh, man. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was made by a girl. <laughs> Get it out of my fridge. It's got cooties. Yeah. But like that, because like, I, I know Ruzel Finch has a lot of female brewers and they actually put the names of who brewed the beer on the can. Yeah. And, Everyone so has like, a seat at the table. Yeah. Everyone has a seat at the table. I, I, I don't care. Like, like, Everyone can make beers, you know what I mean? Like, well, I, I can't make beers. <laughs> and there, there was there was a list I found of like the top ten female friendly breweries, basically. Yeah. And I know Trogues was on there. Because- I will say this, even though I said they're they're a Starbucks or Black Walls, uh, one of the coolest things I did see about Thrive, uh, Thrive is it Thrive? Am I saying it right? Or Thrive? I don't know. It's it's missing the eye. Um, that that brewery when you go to the bathroom, both bathrooms are there's no gender. You can go to either one. Um, but they're like, hey, keep it fucking clean. Don't be an asshole. And also, if you're uncomfortable by any reasons, male, female, gay, straight, anything, they have these slips in there. And what you do is you pull the tab out and you kind of like give it to your server and they'll keep an eye on what's going on. So if you don't feel safe in their environment, they'll watch what's happening. And if someone's making you feel uncomfortable or being rude or fucking standing out or, or making you feel like you don't belong there, um, they'll fucking boot them. Like, get the fuck out of here. We don't, we're not having it. But they, the fact that we even have those in bathrooms yeah. is sad. It you know what I mean? Sad. Like, if you go to a brewery, when you walk into that place, like, as a craft beer fan, or, like, I kind of look at it like a pro wrestling fan. Like, when you walk into a room, enjoy what's being presented to you. Like, it's a craft. It's an art form. It's something you, everyone should enjoy. And, and there's different styles and versions of everything that you're going to enjoy when you get there. You're not a fan of gimmicky stuff. Cool. Here's a pure, here's a purist or here's a lager. Here's a sour. Here's a, you know what I mean? Everything is there for somebody and it, you don't have to hate on one thing to enjoy another. Just use it as a platform to put your differences aside and or that or learn about each other and then enjoy a beer is what yeah. it comes down to. Yeah. Beer brings people together. Well, it, it should bring people together. Yeah. It, and it's funny that we say like pro wrestling should bring people together. Uh, beer brings people everything can bring people together just have a fucking conversation with one another (laughs) to be honest i think the biggest issue behind that is is uh, no matter what they are um, don't be a dick to your employees yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah, treat your people good um what what was cool about that especially like on the breweries and pa group where that was all brought up into too is that like so many people that work for breweries had very high things to say for the breweries that they worked at a lot of them yeah like troves like yeah well like a, a lot of their departments are headed by females like all of their can art is done by a female mm-hmm. like who drogues? Yeah, dude. I fuck, dude. Every it's single time like, something more something like something yeah, negative like, comes out, trogues is like, the, "We're the like, shit." Yeah, we're I'm like, like, "I fucking love they, you, trogues." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like you can't, you, there's nothing you can say. Like Trogue should be international. I just, I, mm-hmm. I, I just, the way they conduct themselves, the way they do beer. If something bad comes out, I'm going to be heartbroken. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't think that will happen though. I no, don't think it, so either. It's just even like the environment there even is like, the only bad thing was when we went to throw axes. Oh like, yeah. And, birthday. Yeah. The, there are, well, I mean, it might be different now that the restrictions yeah, are moved, but, but like, it was like, you couldn't reserve a table unless you were within a mile of the brewery. Oh, really? So, yeah. like, they have an app to do it, but then we got... It was, like, an hour and a half wait. But we have, like, an hour drive. Yeah. So, if they so would have let like, us... We, yeah, we tried to book the table, like, when we left. And yeah. it was, like, yeah. And then we got there and just tried to roll the dice, and it was, like, nah. Yeah. They, if you're, if you're going, just going to throw axes, the, the Medusa Meadery in Lancaster has axe throwing lanes, too. Oh, nice. How did, mail came. And uh, that's right across the street from uh, the fridge. A really Ooh, cool and then un- oh, nice. and un- unbagging. 
<laughs> unbagging. <laughs> Impromptu unbagging. Impromptu. Fright rags. Fright rags unbagging. Uh, this is my shirt. There it is. New t-shirt. Night of the Living Dead, baby. Nice. Did you see the... I know this is not beer, but we'll talk about it on the Patreon. But so I'll just give you guys a hit. Oh, boy. Masks? Oh, Trick or Treat Studios. That's kind of cool. Oh, we yeah. got a different sticker. Shocker. Nice. I, I always get the same I've, Halloween yeah, sticker I've, every time. No, I've, I have like a pile of stickers. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you order. Here's your candy, Heidi. Your toxic waste. <laughs> All right. Sorry. But we're going to talk about it on the Patreon. If, if you haven't watched it, uh, you can check it out. But we're going to... Uh, the. Uh, the new uh, night, of, night of the night of the, the army of the dead. Did you see it yet? I didn't watch it yet. Uh, I'll talk a little bit, but I won't spoil it. But yeah, we'll we'll, we'll shit a little bit on the Patreon. Uh, anything you want to plug? Um, not at the moment. No, I'm good to go. Nope. Uh, just check out the rest of the network, IWP Network. Uh, our brand new podcast of the network. Welcome back. Have you got you, you get to listen to their episode yet? I didn't get to listen. Yet. Fuck the good times are good dudes. Check out the new episode, uh, the new podcast. Uh, welcome back. Show them some love. They just hit 300 people on Facebook. So if you can go over there and give them some love, that'd be great. Um, Jen that helps us out with the podcast started a page. She's going to start, she's going to try showing some more love to the local band scene. She's calling it like the five, seven Oh bands. Yep. Um, cool. so she's trying to find a bunch of bands she's into and, and, and show them love and just be supportive. Uh, we need more people like that and more people who are willing to go out of their way, even if they're not a musician or they're into that scene, but they just want to be a fan of it. More people like that should be showcased and be honored and, and be accepted because, they're the people who get your bands going. You know what I mean? Like Crowbot. Crowbot had someone who went to a show, filmed it, and sent it to somebody else, and that's how they got they got seen. You know what I mean? Like we need more. We need to showcase people who are willing to go out there and and, and show passion and love to the things that they they care about. And Jen's Jen's a great example of that. Um, so if you can go show her page some love, we did share that on our social medias. That'd be amazing. That's all I got. Bang and Beers podcast. We're out of here. We're gonna go record the Patreon. We'll talk to you guys later. Here is some. Faith in Exile for our way up. Perfect. Happy Memorial Day. So speaking of the new